some of the highest natural sentience in the world, Namibia is a mecca for scent borders. Being extreme personalities, the search to conquer the most difficult right never ends. Rarely do you find one who's also passionate and caring about his community. His township tours connect two worlds and empower the local people. His other love, football, keeps the kids off the street and provides them with an opportunity to better their lives further down the road. This is Raymond, enriching his community one step at a time. Namibia, a largely desert country on the southwestern coast of Africa, is known for having some of the highest sand dunes in the world. For extreme sand border, Raymond Inishap, life has been full of challenges. His latest one is the dangerous descent down a steep dune wedged in between two mountains. I was out with a friend driving around in the moon landscape, and then we stumbled out uh, along this place, and it was really an interesting find, an amazing place. And then we thought of one day maybe sandball down here. It's like the dream coming through, sitting here and talking about this place now. Because I've sandboarded so many years, 15 years, you want to actually go try the best or like the most difficult ones. So I've actually sandboard like all over the world now. I've I've done sandboarding in Dubai, I've done sandboarding probably in one of the highest dunes in Namibia, but I haven't sandboarded down something as extreme as this. And it's so unique because I've also, which is like the first place I think in Namibia where you can have the mountain on the side and have a patch of sand in the middle. So it's a very unique place, yeah. And it would be special like if I could go tell my boys one day that I've went down there, you know. So definitely it's like one of the things I really want to do before I retire from sandboarding. Achieving independence in 1990, Namibia is one of the least populated countries in the world. Here in the quaint coastal town of Swakopmund, Raymond's passion for sandboarding was ignited. I see this thing, when you get up on a the sandboard, then you can end up in the road here. Yeah. I came to Swakopmund as a youngster, maybe a 19 year old, and then I have met these people that actually wanted to start this sort of a sandboarding, but none of us could snowboard, so they needed someone to come over to teach the young Namibian to do the sports. So that's how I kind of got to swag up and I fall in love with the place. Through a friend, Raymond was introduced to a person who bought snowboards with the goal of starting a sandboarding business. With Raymond on board and such ideal dunes on his doorstep, this new venture could not have asked for a better start. The next hurdle for the fledging business was the sport of sandboarding itself, as no one in Namibia knew how to sandboard. He needed to teach some local Namibian to do the sport, and unfortunately I was the lucky one, so uh, they had to get a snowboard instructor from Canada to come in, to come teach me to sandboard. It was almost kind of also the beginning of the sandboarding in the country. 42, 41. 41 and 42 is a backup. So 43 and 44 is a backup. Cool. And 44 and 45 backup. I really like it and I got so passionate about it. So I was eager. So I would go out every day. So I think I could sandboard properly like in, in, in a space of three months or so. <laughs> Since the early 90s, sandboarding has grown in Namibia. Okay. And as an international sport, it has taken Raymond all over the world. Like you said, as well, a boy coming from Korihas as well, it has been a head start because it has so many the world. Sandboarding has made me do this unbelievable stuff. 
Needing a challenge, Raymond was invited to the World Sandboarding Championships in Germany. His greatest influence was his sandboarding instructor, Linda, who urged him to compete, and in 2006, Raymond took part for the first time. I think for the first time, I felt like a star kind of thing, you know, because everybody wanted to do something with me, because it was unusual for them to, to have someone coming from Namibia and then come compete. Probably the only African do at the, at the competition, I think, for three years I've been. Pitted against professional snowboarders taking part in their off-season, Raymond fed very well at the championships. Not expecting to win, he reached the semifinals two years in a row in the big jump and border cross events. Yeah, I've learned a lot of stuff. The things I would actually not see here, I would go and see there. So it was a big learning curve for many things, you know. After the world champs, uh, my way of thinking about sandboarding, it has changed. We call this track the border cross track, yeah? That's where we normally have a competition. And because, like I said, the dune have changed the shape, we want to try to find like the best angle to approach the ridge. So we're going to basically start on top, came past here, came over the ridge, carve all the way down and all the way to the bottom. So we can hopefully we can have lots of pace speed. It makes it a bit dangerous because of the rock on the sides. So the safest way probably is in the center. Yeah, I can broke a neck or whack my head on those rocks. Yeah, and knock myself silly, yeah, unconscious. Caught in the constant tug of war between desert sand dunes and rugged seas, the town of Swakopmund serves as home for Raymond and his family. A community activist and family man, his core values were instilled at an early age growing up in rural Namibia. I come from uh, Damara land, uh, from a place called Chaurup, uh, behind France Fontaine. And I was born there, I grew up there and went to school in Korihas. My traditional name is Kambazan. Kambazan is the name I got from my dad, which is an Angolan, and I would assume it's one of the first few words he learned in, in my mom's language, and, and it means uh, fight for yourself. So my dad was a hunter-gatherer, yeah? A very passionate um, farmer, basically. My mother is this amazing woman uh, which uh, has got four children only of her own, but they has got about, as, as far as I know, about 30 also children which she has brought up, one or the other way. So my mother is this woman with this big heart, yeah, and I think it's probably what makes me today, you know, because they both are two different characters. First time I was trying to explain to my mom what I was doing for a living, it didn't really make sense to her, you know? So, yeah, also it was a surprise for me also to end up here, and, and it has been a good surprise also. Oh, it's a spiritual place, you know? There's, there's no place like this. I think when you're in a desert, uh, it feels so much closer to, to, to God, you know? Or the Creator, definitely. What's your name? What's your name? 
Sandboarding has been influential in Raymond's life and introduced him to his wife, Michelle. As a tour guide, Michelle regularly traveled to Swakopmund. As part of her itinerary, she frequently took tourists skydiving, quad biking and sandboarding. Raymond was the main guide, so um, and really liked him a lot. I always, always liked him from, from word go. His focus was on everybody. I mean, you see a lot of guides and so on in the industry and you know, there's a pretty girl, they'll f zoom in on them. For Raymond, he would pick the oldest person on the group and he would make their day. You know, if kids came on the tours, I could just see he put all their attention on, he had them on his back. He just made people have a wonderful time. Mom's here. Yeah. His mom's here from Corrigus and she wants to see her boys too. He's got a heart of gold really. I mean a lot of people probably wouldn't know that about him when you saw him and you met meet him and so on like that, but um, he's an extremely soft, sensitive person um, that will always try and help people. Uh, he always goes out of his way. And yeah, no, I think I fell in love with that aspect of him. Obviously he's also very good looking and <laughs> charmed me but um, but yeah I think that was what really I found special about him is that um, he just may let people really have a good time. The good times continue as the house has become a community home not only in raising their children but in helping other children and young adults to cope with the struggles of life. Having pioneered sandboarding in Namibia, Raymond soon felt the need to grow in the sport. Patient but ambitious, he was soon rewarded with an incredible opportunity. The establishment of the company Hata Angu and its township tours. This was the catalyst for Raymond's own sandboarding business. Every morning I used to drive tourists out to the sand dunes and the idea pretty much came from what they were demanding from me. Because they would come to Namibia and they would be in Swakopun and be in town. Next day, go to Nekan, go to Edosha. Every morning they would ask me, is there any black people living in Namibia, uh, in Swakopun, or any locals here? As a tour guide, I saw that, you know, the people weren't meeting Namibians. You know, real black Namibians, the tourists coming to Namibia were never getting that opportunity. The demand also came from the people in the township. And then as we go on, all the ideas come up. With. Through bringing tourists to the township, the people started offering Raymond more and more cultural activities. Where there was no business before except for a shabin, now stands a nice and safe establishment serving traditional Namibian cuisine. A trip to the traditional healer reveals natural remedies for some common ailments. They, they use it for, what do you call it? Uh, uh, arthritis and thing, and I think they export this also to Germany and then many other countries. So, this is Hanavia. When man krank with erkoldung is, then must man das as tea machen and then drink it, yeah? And then it's ganz good for erkoldung. Hanavia, Hanavia. is das. Hanavia. Sag mal. Despite having a relatively robust, resource-based economy, Namibia still has relatively high levels of economic disparity, leaving many people unemployed. The township tours quickly grew under the leadership of Raymond and Michelle and continue to empower the community and create employment opportunities. We have had lots of youth coming through and who've benefited through, through Hatangu. Um, in the aspect of, of studying tourism later on um, or getting employment. I started working 2004, October. I started as a cleaner and a child minder. Then by the time I was helping out in the office when Michelle was not around. In 2005, when Raymond opens the sandboarding, because the company is divided into two sections, it's sandboarding and township. When he opened sandboarding, when he starts sandboarding, then I was moved to the office. I have a level one guiding skill, so I'm involved in township. I've been doing it for over five years for the township tour as well. So since I start to join Raymond, since we start working, so he's also take me over the township tour and then uh, they teach me how to do it. 
The company is actually helping out also for the youth. So we are trying to involve everybody in the township, in this community, to uplift, to, for, for the upliftments of their life and so on. In a way, we're both very proud of that aspect as well, that it's, it's, it's helped a lot of people, not just all the people that we've employed, but everybody off by walking through the streets and so on. And, and that's what it is as well. It's not just people we're paying directly, Everybody kind of benefits from it as well, which is wonderful. In the case of Moscow, there are no crosses on the other day. Okay. She said, from all the stuff, yeah, there is a good spot and now we slept the party. Yeah, my township tours have established and it's 15 years old and just make big changes already. I don't have to be a president or a minister or a governor or whatever. To contribute. Township Two is the way of my personal contribution, the way I see it is like empowering the people and then empowering as many people as possible. Once the Township Tours were self-sustaining, Raymond embarked on yet another challenge, starting his own sandboarding business. We started for the Township Tours, and then when Raymond decided that he wanted to start his own sandboarding, then we opened that, and that was about three or four years after we'd been doing the Township Tours already. And like I said, that was Hatsang Angu Cultural Tours, which means let's get to know each other. And so it fell under, obviously, that. The sandboarding, it's obviously different, but it's obviously very connected as well. It's also very much the township experience as well, but on the dunes, it's, it's all local guys doing it. And for them to also learn a different sport like that is also great. Welcome to our wonderful desert. Once you got your boots, we'll give you a board according to your style, probably your height and your ab ability, all right. Uh, but before we actually move on, I want to find out if any of you have snowboard before. One day I asked Uncle Raymond if I can come with, and then I saw, I mean, how he does this, so I, I, so I, I thought I would try it out and, and, and I liked it, so I did. I'm a help out guide, so if the information doesn't pass on to them nicely, I have to give them clearly, that's what I do. Sandboarding, it's a sport that takes focus, it takes time. Well, if you want to go out the right, you have to pay for it. That's going to work up. See, you have to work up and then you have to go down. As the sandboarding business grows, so does Raymond's ambition for Namibia's sandboarding future. Already having hosted a few local annual competitions, his dream of hosting the Sandboarding World Championships is not far-fetched. With some of the highest natural sand dunes in the world, Namibia is well suited for an event of this magnitude. As the numbers of sandboarders in Namibia increases, so does the reality of one day hosting the Sandboarding World Championships. The World Champs are being done in Germany, and it's not actually on the actual, on the natural sand dunes. It's man-made artificial dune. They've built a border cross track. It's like a, a course where, we, where four people race against each other with a few different obstacles like jumps, uh, slides and, and straight lining for speed. So when I came back, I had the idea that I would come back and invent um, a similar track on our dunes. So I have came back and we've actually built the jump. And then with the couple of boys, we have carried up the mountain. So yeah, it's very dangerous. Yeah, it's not it's not the safest sandboarding I've ever done. Uh, it just feels like if I don't live on the edge, it's a wasting of time. So I shouldn't be doing it. So definitely doesn't feel like putting my life on the line. Yeah, it just feels more like a challenge. Yeah, and accomplishing what I've always dreamed of. Definitely.
Besides being a passionate sandboarder, Raymond also shares a common African love for soccer. He teaches kids from the local township the beautiful game. You know, I think soccer is my other big love also because uh, now I don't really have a university education, but I've got a football education, unfortunately. Yeah? I've come out also from a place where with no development. Knowing how few opportunities some of these kids might have in their lives, Raymond has devoted his time, money and energy to the cause of getting these kids off the street and contributing to their development. Obviously, did some teamwork, confidence, you know, football, it's, 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 it's not only just a game, but again, it's a bit of life, life skills involved, yeah. Because as a football player, you got to learn, try to live healthy, eat healthy, you know, and try to live a clean life if you want to be a top-class footballer. Raymond is somebody who, who wants to help everyone. I meet him in 2006, and I just say, oh, this guy, he, he, he also uh, opened a field in TRC. Uh, so he liked to help the people, you know. To, to go in there and help communities and do these outreach programs, you know, it's, it's everything what Raymond and I are about in our lives. Is It's with the football, going out there, taking the kids off the street, and, and even if it's playing on the ground or on the tarmac or on an ice cream field, it's getting them hope. In the township where Raymond lives, shabins and bars are many, but there are very few recreational areas and parks for young kids. Football gives Raymond a chance to keep the kids off the street and busy doing something constructive. He teaches them teamwork, patience and confidence, hoping to change their lives in a small way. A lot of them have succeeded. I mean, I remember Raymond um, teaching, training the one kid in DRC, and now he's on the national team. You know, it, it's it's development, and it's it, you don't instantly see it happen, but it takes time. But definitely, um, we've seen really lots of success. Uh, yeah, Aura is a great coach. He's a father. He's a mentor. He basically saw me when I was playing for my school team, and he asked me to come and play for his youth team, and I joined his youth team, and until I come to to the senior team and I'm, I'm glad I'm playing for his team. Raymond has been influential in the rise of many young players coming through his ranks. Some of them having started on the football field in his township. In fact, I've probably got about five players now playing in the highest league in the country. Yeah? And some are actually making a living from football now. I own a football team now. Uh, playing in the national second division. It's a four-year-old team, and I think and all coming from the youngsters, you know, uh, from, from the same township I lived in. Last year, they've ended up, I think, second, so we're improving. Hopefully, probably get my international license, because now I've got the highest sort of license, coaching license in Namibia, in Africa, actually. So I want to be a professional coach one day, yeah. Having achieved so much and planning even more for the future, the ride down the rocky dunes seems even more challenging. I can't tell the future. And I think I kind of got to live where we are now, you know. And you, we're looking for a better future. So I think in life it's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be a good person, you know. And it's not, and it's good doesn't just mean it's, it means many ways, you know. Good means that don't do things to other people that you don't really wish to be done on yourself. Yeah. So basically, be good is like, yeah, you're not gonna change the world. What's been done already is there, but you do what you gotta do. So I can't go too far to my right side because it's big rock there. Too far to the left, it's kind of at an angle, so I might not even slide. And then I would make sure that I would try to stop probably before somewhere around those two bushes there. So the tricky bit is, yeah, I think try to maneuver 
around the rocks and make sure that I don't sort of get stuck halfway up and then roll down on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm always ready as ever. Yeah. Well, I remember for the way, not what I did, but probably for the way I lived, you know. And be to be exemplary to people that I wanna, what I stood up for. It's kind of the important principle for me. Yeah, no, actually, when I hit the ground, it was like, shoo, you know, wow, finally did it. Because also, like, you think like the dreams can also become a reality. Because when you walk around, you always dream. But some dreams you don't kind of think, some dreams you're like, it's a dream. But this dream was just a sudden, it was an instant. It's like, man, I just thought I was just talking about this thing the other day. And then now I'm like down the hill, so I was like, wow, you know. So, you know, really stoked. Eh? It's an amazing feeling. And it's like, yeah, it's, I've been there and I got my T-shirt. <laughs>